Hey everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop, LoneStarMotorFires.com. It is Monday, November 1st, about 8.45 p.m. And uh, kind of need to get this up because we haven't had a Wednesday video in a while and I've got some explaining to do. So uh, this will be what I hope to be a quick channel update. No promises on that. Succinct is not my thing. Lucky for you, there's timestamps. So I suggest if you don't care about spoiling surprises, click the uh, show more in the description box. You can see what we cover and uh, skip ahead if you would like to. Now, let's just go ahead and get things started off on a good note. And if you're sitting here, you're looking at this and you think, what's going on here? What is you trying to shove channel lock down our throats now? No, that's just a uh, uh, cool deal. It was a Labor Day contest they had on Instagram and I actually won it. And this is what I received a couple weeks ago. So we got a sweet hat there. Uh, we've got a uh, slapstick koozie. We've got a big sticker, a small sticker. I don't know if that's like a coaster slash mouse pad for a laptop type of thing. That's kind of what I'm going to use it for. Uh, pretty cool little piece here is actually a keychain. This is based off of their acetate handled screwdrivers and picks if you were unaware. So that was a nice touch. And then what they threw in... Yeah. Kind of hard to do that. <laughs> we'll cover why in moments, but uh, is a pair of 430. So uh, actually, that is the last pair uh, that I bought at work last time. So uh, if you did not know, I am a Channel Lock fan. I like their stuff. It is made in America. As long as you get, you know, the made in America stuff. There is code blue handles, which a lot of people think are imported. They are not. They are made in America. But there is some code blue stuff. It is not, but bottom line, they're an American manufacturer and their tools are ridiculously affordable, especially considering they're made in America. These 318 CBs, some of my favorites, don't need to spend a ton of time on that. You should be familiar with that story at this point in time. So, where to begin? Uh, I think the last time I filmed the video out here, it was the Vera Advent Calendar. And as fate would have it, I think I mentioned in that video I wasn't feeling that great. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I can't mention what went on by its name uh, for censorship reasons, but uh, let's just say it's the lab engineered disease that a lot of people have been stricken by or gotten uh, immunizations for. So I think I got pretty lucky, had a pretty mild case, at least in my opinion, and I uh, didn't have to go anywhere, to hospital, anything. It's just a deal where when I couldn't taste or smell anymore, it's pretty much the only thing out there that takes your sense of taste and smell away. <laughs> and, uh, that's what it was. So uh, that sucked. Uh, cost me some time there. Uh, I heard a lot of people say they sleep a ton. I didn't. I had trouble sleeping because I couldn't breathe. Uh, probably my worst day, I was outside the entire time redoing a flower bed, planting a tree, uh, wood chip soil. Lots of things I probably shouldn't have done, but... Uh, when I get sick, chips and hot sauce and working out have seemed to serve me well, along with like orange juice and soups. So that's kind of what I do. That's not something I would have picked to do, because uh, that was a whole lot of weight I was moving around, and I was about to hack a lung up the whole time. So uh, that was, uh, you know, kind of a downer, killed some time for me. And I'm out here right now, Monday night, because it's currently like mid 70s and our high for tomorrow is going to be at midnight and we'll be in like the upper 30s to low 40s with overcast skies and drizzle so i'm getting this knocked out now while it's tolerable <laughs> so anyway um i feel like really well now there's sometimes you get like this weird you know out of breath cough thing going but whatever um for the most part could have been way worse so you know content with that however uh, something that does suck is this. Uh, I've typically been wearing a wrap from when I broke my thumb on this hand and I found that that was kind of like making the band-aid lift off and uh, so I've left this here. This was totally preventable. Um, I was kind of doing something I shouldn't have been doing with a very large drill bit and uh, I'll just leave the rest up. It's something that I shouldn't have been doing but kind of needed to. Uh, it involved plastic and a vise, and I couldn't crush the plastic. And I also didn't have a drill I was having to use an impact. They were the Hercules bits, if anyone's curious. And uh, it was the second largest one. I'll let you figure that out if you want to reference the old video there. <laughs> so, it was just a deal. I was trying to do something for somebody. I couldn't uh, hold said item in hand and get it to do it, so I was using a vise. 
it was spinning in the vise. I realized if I made it tighter in the vise, it was going to get crushed. And uh, subsequently, you know, doing the old, you know, I'll hold it with my hand type of a thing. If I would have had a drill, I think it would have been fine. But since it was an impact and didn't have any clutches or variable speed, uh, that's probably where things went wrong. So that sucked. It involved a tetanus shot. <laughs> and uh, I can't, I think I'm, it's, it's getting a lot better, but it's a deal where like, it's right there. It's like literally kind of like at this point on your hand, you know, where you'd have a callus on your index finger. So anything I was doing there for a while, I was still trying to do stuff. It would just like break it open and it would uh, bleed like crazy. Didn't hit an artery. Uh, but it's pretty bad when it's uh, first half. And like I said, I had to get a tetanus shot, even though I just had one with a thumb injury and the saw a couple years ago. So uh, this basically has prevented me from doing really cool crud I want to do out here. And I actually feel like doing it now. So that sucks, but that's why we started with good things here. Uh, while we're on the subject, Something that happened, I think I mentioned this, my traffic finger, usually have gloves on when we do the unboxings. Uh, finally, this weekend, or late last week, I don't remember, there was like this, uh, basically at work, we have hooks, and that sounds really bad, but let me explain it to you. Picture like, you know, one inch wide, eighth inch thick flat bar, okay? And then picture like a six inch pipe, and you just heat it up and you bend it to make a hook. Uh, essentially, think of it as like a homebrew extension cord holder. Uh, we hold cable and all kinds of other stuff on them. Well, in this particular instance, I was uh, shelving. It was back in like the, I don't know, it might have been April or May. And it was just a weird deal. I was shelving some items on the hooks, and, you know, I rotate the stock. And I had somebody come back to tell me that a freight line was there. And so I kind of turned and was talking to them, and one of the ones that I was going to pull off fell, and my hand was like this, you know, because I was shelving with the other one, and it hit the finger down onto the hook. I say hook, again, it's not sharp, it's eighth inch flat bar. Uh, it didn't look like this for a couple of days. It hurt pretty good when it happened, uh, but that developed over time, and then I've just, I finally got sick of it, because it would not, it'll never go away. I was told, oh yeah, you know, that'll probably be there, you know six weeks eight weeks it's been way longer than that <laughs> so uh, I started digging uh, a couple days ago apparently you're never supposed to do that but it's I've done it in the past and I can't dig any deeper that's kind of where we're at so I guess I'm just stuck with that um, while we're on that subject the thumb actually looks pretty good out of the glove right I told you it gotten a lot better uh, still can't really grip. It's numb, I guess would be the best sense for it. Again, if you've had anything happen to extremity, finger toe, uh, a lot of you left comments. Um, the RN I dated in college said the man did a really good job stitching that. But, uh, both sides, it was really bad. Uh, it still looks weird. Uh, people used to tell me I could be a hand model. Apparently I should have had insurance. Or maybe they're insinuating I'm hideous and ugly aside from my hands. I don't know. Now these match, but... Uh, yeah, if you watch the Ram Revival, you've seen me without gloves a few times trying to preserve, you know, the alphas from excess of grease and stuff like that. So, uh, if this will get to the point where I don't think I'm going to break it open, um, currently there's like dead skin there and I was told to leave it and then the blood dried and, uh, it'll come off at some point. I don't really know what things look like under that. So, I just kind of throw peroxide on it and, you know, try, which... Like I said, I mean, even like something as innocent as holding a water bottle, that's that's where it goes. So uh, it's just an unfortunate placement. Like if it would have been farther back or, you know, the pinky, maybe we could do middle, you know, traffic or fourth finger probably would have been fine. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to keep this from having anything bad happen past what's happened, if that makes sense. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, once I feel like I can do things and not like worry about getting this super dirty and an infection or something, uh, I'm going to be back out here full swing. We get a three, four days of a cold spell, and we're right back in the 70s, so maybe it'll coordinate on that timeline. Something will go in my favor. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, that's that's kind of why there hadn't been Ram Revival stuff. There is a very important component I was waiting on that I've since acquired. Uh, we'll cover that in detail. It might be a real, real soon upcoming video, because that would be easy for me to crank out. Uh, the truck is idiotically close, I'm not going to lie. It's just like simple, simple stuff. 
backup camera, the exhaust, uh, filling the cooling system, stuff like that. So, um, finishing up the stereo, some minor things. I mean, it's if I had like a solid weekend, we'd probably be running with a tune essentially. So, uh, the problem is I don't have that kind of free time. And then when I do, it's because of stupid things in the world that uh, uh, take take away my free time when I would have it. So. Uh, so that's where we stand on that. I hope to start cranking those out. I really, really need the truck because I need to get rid of some oil, some antifreeze. I've got more boxes than I know what to do with. I typically make like, you know, every other month or so I run down and take care of that stuff. It's just piling up, quite literally piling up. And uh, so I can't wait to get the truck back. On the note of the most recent video, the like massive smorgasbord of a little bit of everything from Harbor Freight, uh, if you recall when I showcased, which a lot of you seem to like, the uh, orange and black little service cart there, so uh, thank you for your support there. But I mentioned the new ones, right? You know, the big top of the line item, you know, the $6.99. I said, man, if you could get that for $5.99. Well, I've been screwed out of getting them like three or four times throughout this ordeal the last like two months or so. And I'm kind of glad I was because now they are $5.99. And there's a very high chance, especially if the truck was running, I probably would have gone up there today. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but there's a very high probability something like that will be coming home. I've considered getting one as like kind of a, a surprise gift for my nephew. That would be like a really cool you know, like starter box, I thought. But uh, Anyway, that might be on the horizon. If any of you have picked one of those up, you've probably had it for a while now. Let me know how you're liking it, if you have any issues with it, if you have no complaints at all. And uh, like I said, if the truck was running and I had two hands, I, it probably would be here right now. So uh, I was unaware they were in store. I have, I've been so busy at work, I can't get to Harbor Freight before they close. Uh, a couple weekends ago, we were actually uh, downstate, ran in a store and be danged. They had them, so I was pretty excited about that. I thought they were still like, eight month lead time is what I was told last so to see some in store granted these were boxed I have seen a black demo uh, at one store but uh, to know that they're actually in store I was like wow you know it's things you don't know when you can't get in a brick and mortar location because of work hours right <laughs> so uh, there's a little update there for you in terms of like tool hauls and reviews and everything one of the reasons I quit recording I had a huge backlog of videos which works out really well when you kind of get screwed out of a couple of weeks of doing anything one of the reasons is I was waiting uh, on the twin grips and then I was waiting on my multi-component twin grips and right here in the flesh multi-component Knipex twin grips so we're gonna have that video soon I've got something else some people were wanting to see uh, which I'm hoping it's not too late to get that up, but I might make that a priority. I can sort of shift things around now because I don't have like a, you know, litany of videos lined up waiting. So it's easier for me to like keep the numeric system going somewhat accurately. So that's, that's about the only perk. Because uh, otherwise I typically have like four to six videos, you know, ready to go, lined up. If something important comes up, I can change the order slightly, but... Uh, yeah, so there's a ton of stuff down here under the duster when I'm needing to get unboxed and showcased. Something I was seeking feedback on, the 5,000 subscriber tool haul. I told you, I sought your input. I said, hey, we're going Matco. What should we do? That stuff is here. It's been here a little while. And um, I can get that video up. It won't take too long to record it. I'd really like to start using it once I can, which I can one-hand some stuff, I'm not going to lie. So... Um, that might be coming up soon if you want me to do it quick if you want me to if you're not interested you know you'd rather see other things i can uh, certainly accommodate that but i promise you the stuff is here it's ready to go just have to make the video uh, another thing i keep having a lot of people request more japanese tool hauls well this is an interesting one it's got a great story with it but i will have now had these items for I don't know, several months. If you've seen the Ram Revival, you probably know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say it. You'll have to go watch that or just wait patiently. But I have that stuff. I've never made a video on it. What's cool there, I've actually used those enough to you know, give more impressions than just an initial, ooh, pretty or ugly or you know, quick benchance 
inspection assessment type stuff, which to me, that's what a tool haul is. A uh, tool review is like, hey, I've used this for X number of years at work. This is a new unit. You know, here's how it's held up. Uh, so that's why I always tell you, you know, like something can seem great here initially and it might suck in the real world. Uh, things can seem terrible here and actually turn out to be pretty good. That's why I always try to kind of put that little caveat, you know, with a tool haul. But uh, those, whenever we showcase them, I can say, hey, you know, these have actually had some, you know, fairly extensive use in the short time I've had them. So uh, that's cool. You can let me know if you like prefer that or the 5K one first. Uh, in terms of poles, a while back I had asked, hey, you know, TIG welder, startup unit, hobbyist DIY, not commercial, not industrial, you know, not making a living with it. Uh, basically, realistically, what I need to do right now is weld O2 bungs on stainless steel. Okay, that's, that's what I'm wanting to give the TIG route. And I was shocked uh, that, so I listed out, I don't know, probably like, what, four to five, you know, pretty common, you know, like starter, you know, low-end brands. And uh, price-wise, anyway, maybe they're great, maybe they're trash. I don't know till I use them. But uh, I was very surprised that we had so many of you vote for the Vulcan. I don't know if like it's just the Harbor Freight contingent on the channel. It's um, I don't know if it's from y'all your experience, like that's what you bought and it's great, or you bought a Titanium because it was on sale significantly less than the Vulcan, and you're like, man, this thing's so good, the Vulcan must be better. I'm very curious on that. I've essentially kind of narrowed it down to a Vulcan or a Prime Weld. And uh, like I said, they could both be trash. They could both be amazing bargains at their price points. I don't know. The Vulcan costs significantly more. Um, the Prime Weld also probably comes with... What you get with that is pretty solid in the accessory department. I don't think that's really up for debate from anyone. Um, and that would be across the board. I mean, that would apply to, you know, Prime Weld versus anyone at that point in time. But uh, it's virtually impossible to find a video uh, from someone coming in like hobbyist DIY, never done this, but going to teach myself perspective that does not have an agenda there. They were given the welder. They were given the welder at a super discounted price. Uh, they were, like, given a super discount and all kinds of free stuff. It's just... It, for me, that, that kills things. You know, if somebody is experienced and they're a great welder and, you know, they run their fancy expensive, you know, unit or they're just a Miller or Lincoln fanboy, whatever, send it out to them, see what they think of it. You know, that's all well and good. Although, again, uh, not many people fight the hand that feeds, if you follow the drift there. And, like, when you try to get, like, a genuine perspective from someone, truth be told, I could probably, based on so many of the videos I've seen, I'm not sure how some of these people, like, they don't really have the, the numeric following or subscriber count or anything like that to render some of the, uh, like, freebies and promos they've gotten, in my opinion. So, based on that, I could probably do the same if I tried. I don't want to do that. I want to go in... As dumb as it sounds, like I would want to give the 825 to Prime Weld and say, this is a piece of trash, stay away. Or, you know what, it might be because I'm inexperienced, but I don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, that's the genuine type of review, you know, you look for, even when it's coming from not the most dependable or thorough source because it's new to someone. Uh, anytime there's, like, freebies or promotions or discount code tied in, kind of raises red flags, you know. So... <laughs> Uh, that's where I stand there, but that's sort of what I'm down to. If you have any insights one way or the other, please let me know. Again, I did not expect the Vulcan to kind of run away with it like it did. And again, I'm, I don't know if it's just people are like, oh, Harbor Freight's great. You know, this guy seems to like some of their stuff. Or if it's just a deal where it's that good of a unit. I, I don't know how to perceive the results on that poll accurately. So if, uh, if you can offer clarity, if you're one of the people that voted for Vulcan over the others, why? Like, is it just, it's Harbor Freight and you support it? Or is it literally first-hand experience or, you know, you've got one at the shop at work that gets used every once in a while, it's been great. Uh, clarity or further expansion of the results uh, would be very much appreciated. So, uh, again, that is something I've wanted to add this year. I really want to get it in so I can add the O2 bung uh, to the exhaust. So, uh, that's where it stands now. That's kind of the stuff it would be doing, aluminum and stainless, sort of specialty metals, uh, fabrication, car stuff. It's basically what it is. So, that's where we stand on that front. Um, 
seems like there was something else I was going to tie in there, and I have no idea what it is currently. Uh, while I attempt to think of that, I'm going to open up a box I got a couple weeks ago that I've not opened because there's items inside I'm going to go ahead and show you because I'm going to run them inside because I might need them tomorrow because it's going to be cold. All right, did I think of what I was trying to remember? Absolutely not, but I'm sure I will in the middle of the night. And as I turned, it reminded me I needed to showcase this to you. We'll have a standalone video coming to kind of kind of cover the uh, channel lock stuff real quick. Right here, this is something. It is from Ernst, also fittingly made in America. These are <laughs> tracks and tool holders. And if you're thinking, oh, that's really cool, you know, and they're in blue. Well, that's the big thing. They are in blue. Um, if you've seen me bring in those Ernst, uh, you know, trays that I use in toolboxes, I really liked them. I love the color. I like blue. And I emailed Ernst and I said, hey, can you guys make this, you know, other, the rest of your catalog in blue? <laughs> and, uh, uh, they were real nice. They got back to me. They said they'd seen the previous videos and they said, hey, you know, actually we're, we're expanding the blue line and it's going to include these. So uh, they sent those out. They are also expanding the range to include orange and green, which look really good in the catalog pictures. Uh, that's something I might bring in as well. Uh, but they're kind of expanding those a little farther. I think they have the screwdriver holders. They also have the bit bosses and stuff. But uh, to get the uh, wrench racks in blue, pretty cool. So we'll have a standalone on those. The other thing I know I wanted to mention to you is the brand new seasonal at KC tool. I'll probably cover this in some of their upcoming tool hauls, but right there, this is a big one. This is something I requested for a couple of years now. I said, hey, you guys need to make hoodies. And it was always a deal where, I think I've even mentioned it in the past, you know, it was a deal where yeah, it's hard to know how many to order, what sizes to order. You know, they obviously take up considerably more space than t-shirts. They're also something that's not going to be worn year round, right? By the North American marketplace anyway. And they finally pulled the trigger. They made it happen. That is the design on the back there. And if we flip this open, all KC Tool merchandise basically is on sale on the seasonal. So you've got the uh, coffee mug, you've got the keychain with the bit holder, you've got, I think they have two different hats now. They've also got two different t-shirts. Um, they've got kind of the old school style that you got, you know, like if you reach 200, 250 bucks or so on an order. And then they've got the new style. Uh, they're all discounted really, really cheap prices. If you've been wanting to pick that stuff up or if you use them as work shirts, it's a great time to do so. Uh, picked up the beanie right here. We'll just go ahead and kind of showcase it now, I guess, because like I said, this is one of the reasons I came out here. I wanted to have this with me tomorrow. So, uh, right here is the beanie. Don't worry, it's bigger. It was folded over. Uh, really nice job right there on the embroidery. So that's kind of cool to see. Uh, the back side, you can see what I'm talking about. It's not like some little chinchy patch that's going to like come off the first time you touch it. Uh, let's see here. Country of origin, not Germany. Don't worry, but uh, gonna give that thing a go. See what I think of it. I'm not a big beanie person. I'm not gonna lie, but I do wear them on a case. If it's cold enough, uh, I'll do a lot of things I wouldn't typically do. So uh, typically, it's not necessarily the cold here. It's the wind that makes the wind chill obscenely cold. <laughs> That's what we're gonna roll with. Uh, right here, one of the things I wondered was like, man, I don't know what size hoodie to get. Sometimes. You know, I need an extra large hoodie. Sometimes it's that's like a, a giant, you know, tent and you need it a large. Other times you get the extra large and it doesn't fit at all. It's like a sausage casing and you need a 2XL. So it's always a crapshoot. Now with their t-shirts, I've found that they seem to match up with everything else I wear. Uh, so I typically roll with the extra large. Uh, Colin went ahead and gave the hookup on this one. So if this fits, I'm keeping it. Uh, if it doesn't fit, it's probably going to be given away and I'll reorder accordingly. But uh, let's go ahead. This would be the front, I'm assuming. Uh, it looks like uh, Custom Ink is who did these. So we'll get the brand on this as well for you. That way, if you are familiar with the brand and how things fit you from that brand, you'll hopefully have an answer. So we've got the nice... Oh, I like that these are short too. I always wind up like my current hoodie, this thing. Oh yeah, those, those get caught in things and go everywhere. So 
Uh, we also need to check it out. It is a uh, what they call a kangaroo pocket apparently at schools now where you can go all the way through. It is a pullover. Uh, if you want zip ups, I'm not a fashion person. You know, I just wear the same thing over and over again. Uh, and it's usually branded Mopar or something to do with tools. So it is Gildan. So if you have a lot of Gildan shirts in your closet, uh, typically when you get like promotional items, you know, or like company apparel or branded stuff, it's Gildan. Uh, you've started to see in a couple of years, I think there's like a next level one. I always seem to make those turn pink and they fade really bad. But, uh, they're really soft when you first get them. But uh, yeah, Gildan is what you're going to want to pay attention to for kind of feeling out what size you need. And then again, extra large is this size. So again, up front, you've got a pullover hoodie. You've got the kangaroo pocket. You've got the logo here. When we spin it around, that's where you're going to have the big logo. So we'll do that right now for you. Boom. Big KC tool hoodie right there. So that is what we've got. That's again one of the reasons I came out here. And uh, I'm going to see if that thing fits me. If not, one of you might get it. Uh, so I guess you can keep your fingers crossed either way that I'll look really cool and, you know, not be cold tomorrow or someone could win a hoodie. And I don't know which way we should sway. <laughs> so, I think that's it. We've got a ton of, I mean, I don't have them recorded yet, but once I do, we'll have videos for, for many months. Like I seem to like to stockpile. Like I said, the good thing about doing that, it sucks if something new comes out and you've got a numbering system going, but at the same time, then your content is covered. Uh, if you get into a spell where stupid things happen that shouldn't still have a video. Uh, if you get sick, you got videos. If you go out of town, you've got videos. So there's pros and cons both ways. <laughs> so I try to give myself a little flexibility in there. But uh, yeah, lots of KC tool hauls based on what I'm looking at over my uh, right hand shoulder. Um, I've gone ahead and covered the seasonal for you. You'll probably see me mention that a few times moving forward. Uh, just in case people don't watch the update video, then they might know. Uh, very, very cool to have won the channel lock stuff, especially getting it like in the uh, heat of like the uh, man, this sucks, I'm not able to do what I want to phase. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I've got my fingers crossed. I can like start using my hand without anything bad happening and uh, should be good to go. So I think that's it. It seems like that. Okay, yeah, I remembered what it was right here at the very end. So. Anyway, uh, that's where we stand there. Won this. That was a big pick-me-up. Uh, cheers you up when it shows up. Thanks to Channel Lock for that. Lots of really cool stuff coming. If you have any preference on the order of any of that, feel free to let me know. Again, Vulcan versus Prime Weld. Let me know where you stand and preferably why you stand there. If it's just like, oh, that one's orange and looks cool. I appreciate that, but I'm, I'm kind of hoping like somebody's used both or somebody has one and loves it has had zero issues and just as importantly you bought one and it's a total train wreck and you wish you never would have spent a penny on it those are the most valuable opinions to me so uh, like i said my plan is to go into that as the guy that's not promoted and not paid off so if i buy the vulcan if i buy a prime weld it's going to be with whatever easily obtainable promotion i can get and if it sucks it sucks if it's great it's great and we're going to call it good there. So feedback there. Also appreciated uh, the twin grips. If you, I guess, twin grips, 5,000 subscriber tool haul and the not going to mention by name Japanese stuff. Let me know if you have a preference one way or the other. I will probably have to film one of those this weekend. I do have a couple videos left. So uh, there's a chance you see that depending how how bad things go the rest of the week but at some point in time they have to start going slightly better so optimistically look forward to that again the kc tool seasonal if it's getting cold where you're at just know you can get the new hoodies on discount they've got beanies as well uh, like i said i very well may be rocking that stuff tomorrow so thanks to colin for sending this out if it doesn't fit me i'll let you know in the next kc tool haul and somebody can win it so we'll leave it there but uh with that said, sorry for rambling. I think I've covered everything. I felt bad, like the Ram Revival is gaining traction, getting like a loyal audience, and it just kind of stopped. 
uh, was not by choice, I assure you of that. So, that was just, you know, unfortunate things that happened. So, I'm looking really forward to being able to, like, use this without risk or fear of, like, screwing it up more than it is. Uh, if you know how to get rid of that thing, let me know. And again, thumb, you know, I mean, I, I keep using it, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But if you see me from, like, ten feet away, you'd never know anything bad happened. If you, like, shake my hand, you're like, oh, God, you know, it's Frankenstein over here. <laughs> I'll tell ya. So I will leave it at that. Going to hop inside. But, man, it's been nice being out here while I'm not freezing. So, uh, like I said, just a few days and we're back in the 70s. That's the uh, awkward period between summer and winter here in the Texas Panhandle. But, uh... With that said, thanks for watching. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you prefer. And if you have not subscribed, I encourage you to do so. I also frequently run polls in the community tab. I might do that based off of this as well. What video you want to see, Vulcan versus Prime Weld, and we'll take it from there. So with that said, again, nice cheer me up. Got some really cool stuff to look forward to. And if you got feedback on the TIG welders or the Toyota forklift, please let me know, and I sincerely appreciate it. Hope you all have been having a better past six to eight weeks than me. <laughs> and, uh, if not, I feel for you. If it was worse, I feel really bad for you and hope it gets better. And uh, for everyone else, hope you have a great rest of your week, and I should see you back here Saturday morning. <laughs>